Hello guys, and welcome back to another M Creator lore series, or episode, I guess. So today what we're going to be doing is basically making a new uh, set of a uh, pair of uh, trees, which are basically uh, for that biome that we have with the trees and stuff in it. I wanted to design something with roots. Uh, that way, then, things would basically allow us to be a little bit over the edge and still allow us to um, actually place a structure and stuff. So uh, the roots should act as a kind of like a additional area for um, a little bit uneven terrain, not a huge amount, but it will still give some characteristic to the tree itself. Um, hopefully that's what will happen. Uh, it will take a little bit of time to figure out the exact model and stuff like that. And uh, what else we did today was worked on uh, some extra blocks for decorating these trees. So um, we'll be making a couple moss blocks and a vine system. Well, not anything with mechanics just yet, but something that we can eventually use for um, decoration and stuff like that. So basically I wanted to get the leaves in. And I needed to just shift this whole thing up by like one block because it just looked a little bit odd like that. So um, I moved it up by one block, removed all the um, leaves from underneath, and then I just uh, patched up the um, actual uh, leaves on the top here so it would basically work like that. So basically this is what I went with. I changed some of the the parts down there and about four blocks underneath the um, root system will be so basically everything above four blocks is basically where the tree is and we'll kind of go from there I guess so now that I got that part in I needed to uh, I started thinking about actually making some of those blocks so I wanted to start with the texturing and get the texturing all set up so we could basically go ahead and uh, make some darker shaded uh, moss blocks. I just kind of painted on a little bit of the corners to kind of give me an outline of where the seamless texture would be. And then I kind of just like added some noise uh, for the uh, transition into the lighter gray. So that's basically what I did with that part and then I tried to kind of make it a little bit more noisy in the middle part here and eventually I blended that in with other shades I think I used like four different or two additional shades that I didn't have yet so uh, some darker ones on the edges and I think I added some of that in the center part as well uh, just a, a little bit of noise to give us uh, some texture and stuff like that. And then I basically worked on the inner part. Just a little bit of noise there. And then on the corners. I'm only, mostly figure, uh, focused on the corners. After doing that, I added a little bit more noise in the inner part as well as the outer or the lighter gray part. So uh, we could basically um, give something like this. So... Once I had this texture done, I, I needed to make the blocks and stuff for that. Um, this will be the moss texture. So basically when we make a 32 by 32 image and uh, make it seamless, as you can see, this is kind of what it's going to look like when it uh, connects all up and stuff like that. So it should look really nice. And we'll use tint index to actually um, make sure that the uh, moss adapts to the foliage color so we could basically get that all sorted out so once we've done that i needed to create the vines so i needed to kind of create a shape that was a little bit more unique and i thought with three vine uh things would that would probably be good i had some trouble with the last one as it was a little bit uh, temperamental i couldn't get that right shape that i wanted so eventually i worked it in but um, always having like a general outline is really handy for um, working with this kind of stuff because then you have like an idea of where all the pixels are going. And the hardest part is to make sure that the connection at the top of the image and the bottom of the image when it comes to the vine are connected. And then I started working on some leaves for the vines, uh, just something a little bit different. 
um, then just some string uh, textures and stuff like that. Eventually I ended up um, making the leaves a little bit lighter as well. I think I used the grass texture, the grass gradient for the um, the, uh, the actual leaves and stuff. So I started filling in some uh, some of the, with the darker shade that we used just to kind of separate that gray a little bit more. So I filled that in and then I worked on the um, leaves a little bit more, but I eventually didn't like the general look of it because I didn't, I was restricted to a, a very low scale of um, quality. So I ended up, what I ended up doing eventually was just like making sure that the uses the grass color because it was just not enough uh, transition between the two uh, grays I felt. So um, I'm glad I did because it looks really good at the, when I was finished with it. So, um, yeah, so basically I started working with that and then I started experimenting with the, um, lighter color. So I went with the darker one first and then I actually went with the actual, um, a little lighter gray to fill in that spot and it does look really good. We'll see it in game in just a few moments, but, um, I needed to make sure that this was uh, seamless, so I was just adding some extra detail around the uh, vines themselves just to give it a little bit extra shading, and then once I had that part in, then I could go ahead and test if the uh, axis was seamless, so I wanted to make sure that it was seamless. So I went like that, and it was, so that was perfect. Well, most of the, it was a little thick around these these parts, so I had to delete some of this stuff just to clean it up a little bit. But um, overall, it was pretty good. So I was just making sure that it was seamless from that part, that point, and I was pretty happy with the design, so we used that for the vines. And just some minor tweaking Sometimes you don't always have it seamless, even though it looks like it could be. And um, it's important to double check with the 32 or the, like the times two of the actual size of the image. Um, if you wanted to see all sides of the connection and stuff like that, then you could go ahead and even do a, um, a three by three image. But in most cases, uh, you will only really need to have like two by two of your actual image size so and I found that's the most easiest method uh, of course if you have a sprite or something like that then y you already have tools that can make it a lot easier for texturing without doing that step but in paint.net you, you kind of have to do it that way so I wanted to make a um, I believe the vines first so basically what I was doing was just making sure that it was center I was playing around with some of the settings just see what I could come up with and I didn't like how the pixels were all stretched and stuff like that so I just um, I used the default system for that and we'll be using this as the vine texture or vine model and one of the mistakes that I ended up making uh, that I ended up correcting later on was only making sure that the one side was with tint index I didn't realize that you had to do that for all the sides, so I must have forgotten that. But once I got the texture and stuff in, um, I basically exported it and, well, set up the display and all the other stuff. Uh, we ended up going back and fixing some of the display stuff as well. So uh, there was a few things with the display that I wanted to tweak a little bit because it was a little bit hard to see the actual texture of the vines with the current model. So um, I ended up going back and making the actual display for it with more of a 2D texture so people could see what the vines look like. But um, we'll get back to that in a little bit. So the other thing that I wanted to do was make a moss block, like a block that could be used as moss. So we'll, I ended up um, creating that, although I had some trouble with getting the tint index in. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up for some reason. It was weird, but eventually just off clicking it and then clicking it again gave it. And then of course I had the same issue with um, 
not knowing that the sides had to all be selected in order to uh, apply it to all sides. So that was another issue that I had to correct. Uh, we'll probably correct that in a couple extra, uh, like a couple minutes. And then I needed to export and save those. So uh, basically I, I always keep a copy of the models themselves just in case I need to go back and edit it in Blockbench or whatever. Um, it saves importing the model and setting up all the textures and stuff like that again. So um, it's just one of those things that I really tend to do. That's why I've always included it mostly in the workspaces, project workspaces and stuff. It's just easier because, I mean, you're already there. You're saving it and exporting it. So it's like, you might as well like exp or save the actual block branch file, right? All right, so this is basically the... Um, moss carpet that I was creating. Uh, this one will go on top of the tree branches or tree roots just at the base of it. Uh, we didn't actually use the moss block just yet though it could come in handy for other things uh, later on and I was just adjusting the uh, holding position for the th third person and that way it was set up that way and I wanted to adjust the first person just a little bit as well so it was a little bit more um, in proper place. Now everything else was pretty much good to go. I didn't see any issues with the display properties or anything like that. So I exported it and saved. So once I did that, I needed to import all the assets, needed to import the textures, and then import the models themselves. So that's basically what I did here. Uh, fun note, I actually had to go back and do this twice or a couple times because of the other issues that I had. So, And then I needed to make the blocks for the actual um, moss block, moss carpet, and vines. So I started working on that. And I believe I started with the moss block and I needed the texture. Uh, though the texture was already set up through the model itself, but I just like to keep everything, you know, close to everything else, I guess. So basically I was just setting up the properties. I didn't know what I wanted to go with, but um, I set the um, hitbox or the hit resistance or something to like, I think it was like one or something like that, one and one or one and two or something like that. And then just setting up the rest of the properties and stuff for the block. So um, the grass, uh, I think the sound was more of a moss block. There's apparently a moss carpet sound as well. I didn't know that. I thought it was just the same thing, but apparently not. And then I wanted to add flammability to like 10 or 20, something somewhere in there because moss would be flammable. It's actually quite flammable. So um, yeah, you would have to that so I ended up adding that because if the tree breaks and you want the moss to burn too right so um, I'll probably add a condition for the carpet so it has to be on a solid face but we'll get back to that in a future video uh, the other thing that I wanted to do was set up the carpet so I selected the carpet and a few other properties for the moss and then the last thing I needed to work on was the vines so basically I was just duplicating that setting up the vine texture and then the vine thing. And there was some properties in here that I didn't uh, take in account for. Uh, for example, the uh, collision box and a few other things. It's very early in the morning. It's like eight o'clock. Um, but yeah, so basically I was setting up the, what do you call it? The properties, the sound effects. And I think the I changed the hitbox to be a little bit lower, so like 1.2 or something like that. And then I needed to set the sound. I didn't know what to use, so I just used used the vine sound texture. I figured that would probably be good enough. I think it's just the plant texture, to tell you the truth, but or the plant sound. But um, then I adjusted the um, creative tab, and then I can move in game for testing. So when I was in game, I noticed uh, quite a few issues with the blocks. Uh, like I said, the 
Uh, tint index was only applying to one side, so I needed to go ahead and fix that. And then there was a few issues with the vines themselves. They should be transparent or cut out at least. Um, so, and there was also the the tint side that was only happening on like one side of the uh, vines themselves. So I needed to correct that and all that stuff. So uh, I ended up going back into the vines, setting up the uh, cutout just so it was a little bit more uh, properly set up. And then I could go ahead and start working on the tint index. This time I selected all the um, sides and then I set the tint index to zero and then one just to make sure that they were all synced. And then I did that for the moss uh, block, moss um, carpet and vines as well. So once I got all those done, then I was able to go ahead and finally import those models once again, set up all the textures and stuff like that. So um, I needed to make sure that the both, both of the blocks on this one, the um, vines, like all sides were properly indexed for the carpet so I needed to make sure that both blocks were set up but outside of that it was uh, pretty good uh, the tint index you have to enable to your um, block bench settings for the texture uh, it's not there automatically so if you needed to use it then you have to actually set it up manually through the uh, gear icon and then set up the, all the things so I had to delete the models that I had before and import the new ones so I could basically use it. So after doing that, I just re regenerated the code and build it. So I could basically make sure that everything was set up. And as you can see here, it is set up, but we're blocked from actually going through the vines. So I wanted to fix that issue uh, quickly. And that's just going into the vines and then setting the block to be walk throughable. And now we can kind of th go through the block and stuff like that. So that's perfect. Uh, now the next thing that I needed to do was actually make uh, more of these trees. I needed to actually get the leaves set up. So I needed to set the blocks with that are air right now to structure voids. So basically any blocks in this area will basically have priority over the space rather than just leaving it as air as it would basically replace the entire section with air which is not what we want for a tree so especially for the ground part where the roots are uh, that would be really bad so I wanted to make sure that other blocks had priority and then I needed to basically replace all those leaves with the leaves themselves so the persistent was set to false as you can see there it was um, false on the tree part and true when we place down the leaves themselves. So that's basically what that replace feature does. And I was just basically setting up the, um, the properties for that tree. And then what we could do is we can go and create a couple more different height levels for this variant. And what I will end up doing over the weekend is basically making more versions of sizes. So it will take a little bit more time to put together, but it should be ready by next episode so we can start working on uh, proper tree generation and a few other things related to the trees, like the saplings, things like that, that will, that will actually grow the tree. So basically I needed to import the, or copy over the tree that we had over there. And then what I wanted to do was basically increase this height of the tree by like, I think I, it was like four blocks. Now, what I what, what I ended up doing was making a middle height variation, which was only two blocks higher. Now, if you have that problem where it says it can't move the thing, then what you can do is you can just uh, tell it to move it or force it to. And what that will do is it will um, override that particular error of it um, overlapping and stuff like that. So. Once I got that part done, I just needed to shift it up one more block just so it was a little bit higher and then I could start working on uh, getting these parts all set up. Now I <laughs> broke quite a few blocks in here by accident so I needed to fix all those, um, what do you call it, the 
uh, air blocks. The air blocks are actually blue, so the structure voids are the kind of like the red icon. It would be nice to have more options for um, displaying things that are like cave air, void air, things like that, as it would be really handy for knowing all the um, different types of materials and stuff like that. But um, I'm not sure if they're going to be adding that in the future. Uh, I did notice on Wiki there was uh, some variation, but at the moment it's not in Java, so maybe it's just a bedrock thing or something like that at the moment. But Hopefully they'll uh, synchronize that between the games so it's a little bit easier as making structures and stuff can be a little bit tricky when you need to use cave error in some cases. So, But uh, outside of that, uh, we got that part done and then I needed to go ahead and uh, clone this and clone the other part. And then what I was going to do was make a third level. Um, basically just a smaller version uh, by two blocks. For this variation of tree so i needed to kind of clone down this entire thing by a couple blocks so i was just trying to find the hitbox for the structure void and then i need to move it all down like that and there's some things that i needed to sort out from there i needed to make sure that the vines were all you know looking good again and placing some structure voids that i break by accidentally but outside of that, it was uh, didn't take too much time to do. Uh, once I got this all set up, then I could um, move on to just some smaller changes for the uh, stump part. So these parts right in here, I uh, changed a little bit. So I made it so it was a little bit more um, different than the other blocks. So I basically worked on that and just filled in the structure voids manually so I didn't have to worry about actually running the command again. And uh, this one I changed a little bit as well. I brought this one up like three and put some moss on top. So it was just a little bit different in the aspect of the um, bases. Uh, we'll probably use um, I don't know, some rotations and stuff like that. I'll probably set up different rotations for all three of those structures, as well as the additional sizes and stuff like that that I'll end up making. So once I've done that, I needed to create a placement condition for the vines. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this. I might end up moving it to uh, like creating a different system for an update tick, uh, just so that they generate. Because when I made the thumbnail for the video I noticed that they pop off uh, when you're generating them so it might be wise to actually run it through like an update tick so when they first tick or whatever then they might be able to drop off or something like that but then again it wouldn't work if it's um, done that way so you might need something like a nearest neighbor or something I, I don't know I'll have to figure out something that will work I don't know if it will work at the moment but um, I'll need some time to think about how and to test it when we actually do generate it because if it does drop the placement condition problems and it's going to be a problem of its own so we'll have to figure out something for that but um, even if it's creating a proxy uh, block that will uh, have the condition but the other blocks won't or something I don't know we'll figure something out uh, but at the moment, um, I just needed to create the structure of the folders up a little bit more so we could um, find everything a little bit easier. And there was just the importing the structures for the vines and, or the, uh, the trees that we designed today. So again, uh, next episode, what I'm going to do is work on the um, probably, probably get the... Um, what do you call it the trees uh, imported and different rotations and stuff like that and we can start working on the sapling script and a few other things like that uh, I'll be rotating all these blocks or these trees so basically using the structure block itself I can rotate them and then we'll be able to do that so uh, one of the other things I wanted to fix like I said before was the display for the actual um, the vines so I needed to set it up so the 
size was a full texture like the vines actually are in the Minecraft. And I just wanted to make sure that the light source was coming from the front so it was lit up and not like on an angle or anything like that. Once I did that, I needed to replace the block, the model again, and then I re and then regenerate the code. So everything was set up again, once again. So just testing it in game, and it looks really good. So as you can see, it looks like a 3D model when you're actually holding it, but it's um, a 2D image when you're actually looking at it in your inventory, which is perfect. So that's pretty much it. Um, I needed to create just some extra sizes for these trees for my outline when we do go ahead and, um, well, when I go ahead and create the other trees off camera. Uh, there will be four rotations for each one. So there's gonna be a lot of trees that we'll have to program in for um, the variants for the structures and stuff like that for the saplings and it'll take a little bit of time to set up the rotations and stuff like that but i'll make sure that everything is done properly uh, when it comes to making sure the leaves are all set up this time around and stuff like that i don't think i set it up properly last time so they didn't decay so i needed to make sure to replace the leaves and stuff which is kind of the point why i'm redesigning the trees from the ground up so hopefully this will help with the um generation and stuff like that but uh, those are the other sizes that I wanted to create and then I did end up creating a couple more larger ones which um, are basically a little bit taller than those ones so I'll, I'm not sure if I'll use those ones but uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, I had a little bit more variety of uh, sizes so basically I was just creating a size here that was 11 by 11 and then I needed to get the height of this one so this one's 15 so I set the height to 15 and then we'll kind of build up from that point on so 15 and then we'll go with like uh, 17 and I think I went with 19 as well so those will be my height variants for these ones here so as you can see there's quite a bunch of uh, height variation between these trees that's good because then you don't have all the same kind of um, height restrictions and stuff but uh, that's pretty much all I did today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out